What's up, everybody? It's Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Feed the Beast Revelation. I still haven't quite figured out what I'm actually titling the series, so that's what we're going with. Um, so I made some changes around here. Not too many out here. Um, a couple of you had mentioned that as long as the leaves are touching a log, these shouldn't disappear. And I think that's the case, because they haven't gone away. And I'm thinking, since I was going back and watching Etho's old playthrough, it was probably an outdated version of Minecraft that had that happen, where the leaves would just despawn no matter what, if you broke them or whatever. Um, working on a couple of the bee things, I finally got a cultivated, and so I was pairing that with a common one to try and get either a diligent or a noble work our way up to the royal jelly stuff and then we can start doing like alviaries and whatnot. Um, the other thing, big 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 thing, uh, I mentioned a storage issue in the last episode and you'll notice all of my chests are gone. Uh, it was recommended through the comments to use these small storage crates which are awesome. These are amazing. Um, I forget how much they hold. It's like four chests worth. worth, worth mm, four chest worth. Let's go with that. Um, let's see. It's The small storage crate things are the first thing you'll use. You make them with a wood casing, which is a log, four sticks, four planks. And then you put that with four chests, four planks, and surround it, and you get a small crate. Um... Actually, I just realized, oh, I ha oh, this is what I meant to click on, was the wood casing. Okay, I had this for the, my next project thing I was working on. Um, the other thing was basic drawers. They're uh, kind of similar to a barrel um, in that they hold uh, 32 stacks of items, it looks like. Or is it? Yeah, I think it's 32 stacks because it's uh, 16 and then there's no plus zero there at the end before it goes to this one. So I'm pretty sure it's 32. Um, actually, I don't really know why this is set up the way that it is. And then you can kind of shift click them in and get more stuff. And then you can, uh, was it left click and hold? Okay, there's left. So I don't know why I had all of this. Okay, so it's 32. Now I can put these back. So I actually had more room than I thought. Um, and there's different drawer setups you can make and stuff, but these worked pretty well for me. So I have my drawers up here for, you know, like uh, logs, planks, cobblestone, stuff like that. Uh, and then I basically just have everything else thrown into these, actually these three chests, and then this one's kind of for bees, and then the rest are all empty. I just have them for extra storage, so they definitely hold a lot more. And they're actually not that expensive. Um, so, for the lab. Oh, and I also found a, a mind-blowing thing, by the way. Um, and that, two mind-blowing things, actually. That is, the first is that you can actually use pumpkins for food with the actually additions. You can do a pumpkin over a bowl and get pumpkin stew. So that's kind of cool. And I also found out this really, really neat thing about rice. So before, I had mentioned putting the rice directly into, um, whatchamacallit, into the, the culinary generator, right? Um, it turns out you can actually use the rice to make rice bread. And I didn't know this, I was actually watching a Direwolf 20 video because I was looking for a tutorial about a different mod and how to set up a mob farm, which is kind of what I'm going to be working on today, mostly. And uh, I noticed he had rice bread in his inventory. Now, I'll grant you, I believe the video I was watching was actually on his direwolf pack, so it's a different mod pack. Um, but you can see it actually does have it. It's from actually additions. So you do three together and it makes two rice dough. So there's that. Uh, we'll go ahead and... Nope. Oh, it didn't throw it in. Okay. So we'll do that, and you throw the rice dough in there. Now, grant you, I think wheat still ends up turning out better, because you need three rice to make two dough, whereas you only need one wheat to make one flour, so it's a one-to-one -one with wheat. Um, 
But you can actually then put these into the culinary generator as well. And I can't remember if they do more. Let's check. So 24,000 RF over 25 seconds at 48 per tick. And this would be 24 over 30 seconds at 40. So you don't get as much per tick, but it lasts a little longer. Um, but I think total, they're the same. So, yeah, I'll probably start making these into... Um, I think I'm going to start making these into my fuel source. Rather than regular bread, I think. And regular rice. Because um, it's kind of one of those, if we can up our... Actually, here, I want to check something. So if we put this in a culinary generator, it's only 800 for 2.5 seconds, so you get a lot more power out of the rice bread than you do um, rice itself. So, and then of course we can always throw our seeds in there. Unfortunately, I did basically come to the conclusion that there is really no... Um, I don't want these to go wherever my last stack was. There they are. Uh, the rice seeds can really only make seed oil. That's that's basically all they're useful for, other than you take rice seeds and you can make more rice out of them, but I'm already growing it, so it doesn't really matter. So I don't really know what I need rice, or I mean seed oil for yet, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna throw it in there. Because why not? Um, ba -ba -bum. So. While that's doing that, I wanted to show off what I've been working on. So I want to kind of work on maybe powering the laboratory, which is going to handle all of our genetics and stuff for the bees. I want to kind of work on that being um, kind of separate from the rest of the rest of the uh, the base. So it has its own self-sustaining power source. And yes, I'm intentionally not looking behind me so that I can do a dramatic reveal. Da -da -da -da. Um, so this is going to be the mob farm area. I've got a little switch here. These are all redstone lamps. And again, from the dire wolf video, this is dark glass, which is a really cool glass setup. Basically, it allows you to see in but it does not allow light to pass through it, which is really cool. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of light over there. Um, the unfortunate part to this is the way that that uh, mob crusher is set up. You can never really get it completely to where there's no, um, no facades or anything. So this is all the redstone for the lamps, which was kind of complicated because of the conveyors, because redstone actually turns off um, these immersive engineering conveyors, which is kind of annoying. So I had to kind of figure out different ways to do it, but I'll show it real quick. Um, I had to pull... where did it go? There's a ton of wiring in here. I don't know that it's most efficient, but it works, and I'm not great with redstone, so once it gets working, I'm like, yay! Um, I think this... It's. I think it's actually this block right here is the where the lever is. Um, so then obviously we run over the top lamp and over the other top lamp and then the line splits down here We have a repeater going this way and another line going down and around this again was kind of more complicated than it probably needed to be um, But I don't know Actually, let me see I could probably change this now that I'm looking at it I could probably put this right here and then just break all of this and it should yeah that still works so I can just go down that way and then it goes to a repeater and the repeater goes into a block and then can I break this safely sort of so then it basically just runs along and there's another repeater down the line that connects to that lamp or the block below that lamp um, so yeah, it's, I'm not a very great redstone person, so once it gets working, it kind of ends up messy, but it works, so then I just tend to leave it. Um, same thing that way, it just runs along there. Um, and it's basically the same thing on, on the other side. Uh, we have a line that goes this way, and down there to the other ones, and then one that comes along here and goes into that block, uh, which ironically... 
Uh, it goes into this block, which powers all this, but then it powers the block next to it and above this, which is why that turns on. So that was actually an accident, and it ended up working. I was like, okay, well, that's cool. Um, I can't ever figure out my own tunnels. So basically, all of this is is just to make the lights work, so I can disable the spawner if I want to, because originally I was going to go with, um, it's from Immersive Engineering, it's a mob duplicator. I was going to go with one of these, and it needs um, to, you need to provide it with essence, and I may still do this at some point, but I also found another solution. Um, where is the wall that I'm looking for? Here it is. Okay. Crap. Um. Uh, so yeah, here we are. And we have this little conv the, these little conveyor things, but I was going to put a duplicator. The room is actually larger than this can handle uh, because the... Let's see. So if we look at the mob duplicator, it says it has a 9x3 width, which is how I built this room, but the crusher has a 7x3. So height is the same, but it only has a 7 block width radius. Um, or 7x7. 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. By 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, 7x7. Seven seven. Um, and so the room's a little bit bigger because I was thinking that I was going to use a duplicator, which I may still do, but I also found through Direwolf's videos, that you can get this thing called a Drop of Evil, which is from X-Utilities, and it comes from a Wither Skeleton. I happened to get lucky in the Nether, and I got one fairly quickly. Um, but essentially what'll happen is if I were to place it down on this dirt, it'll all just turn black, and it spawns mobs at a much higher rate when it's dark. Hence the lights, because it still works off of vanilla Minecraft spawning mechanics, it's just like accelerated. So if you turn all the lights on, they won't spawn. Um, and so, the idea here is that they'll spawn, if they spawn further out here or something, because underneath here is dirt, so I wasn't sure if that would happen or not, uh, they'll get pushed into the crusher's radius and it'll kill them. And the crusher will get mob essence, you need to supply it with power to get mob essence and drops. It also has this cool little feature you can do show working. And uh, it's a little weird with the shaders pack, but you can kind of see this black border here. Or green or whatever the heck it's supposed to be. Ah, there it goes. You get this weird distortion in the shaders mod. It probably wouldn't do it otherwise. But that's the, the radius, uh, or the active working area, whatever. Um, so... Then I have all of my, um, I don't think I have anything that I can break here. I have all my piping. So it looks complicated, but it's fairly simple. Um, I set up the mob drops to go out of the left, the essence to go out the front, which is ironically this. I thought this was the front, apparently not. Um, and then power goes into the bottom, right? So these two needed servos to pump them out. So we have our fluid duct for the essence, and the essence is going to go that way, the power is going to go that way, and the items are going to go this way. Now, the weird part is if we seal this all up, well, I have the lights on, so that's not going to work, um, but if I sealed it all up, over here, these facades or covers are not actually blocking any light. So if I really wanted to make this quote-unquote perfect, where it's like a zero light room, um, I would eventually need sig Signalum. I never remember how you're supposed to say that. Signalum. Yeah. And the Signalum ducts, if I can find it. Is it plated? Yeah. These can transfer items and redstone. And so what I could do is have this one cable be power and items, and I could remove this, and this could be a solid block. But until then, because I'm not really there yet, um, I blocked all this up to try and block as much light as possible. And then put these guys here. And it works pretty well. I mean, I looked at the math, and although you do still see a little bit of light, it's like four or five or something, so it wouldn't prevent the mobs from spawning. Um, so if I turn this off, it's still going to... It's still going to be dark enough for everything to spawn on all the squares in there. 
Um, and then I have an energy cell, which is where the power conduit is going to. And then I have these guys that are running to the side, which is going to charge the energy cell. And I need to put a power source there. And then this is the fluid duct, and this is the item duct. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is put a uh, storage chest here and put a tank here. And then that'll give us our essence. Now, once we started getting essence, I could put... Um, I could put the mob duplicator in here and pump this essence directly into the duplicator if I wanted to, to go that route, um, but I don't know. For now, I think we're just going to use that since it doesn't cost us anything to spawn it. However, the duplicator would be nice in the idea that you can control um, what you're spawning. So, for example, I have a capture pod thing, which is totally not a Pokeball, um, and I think I have a skeleton captured. And the reason I was doing that, I need to find a way to power the lab. And I don't remember if I can use the essence for anything to power. I don't think I can. I don't know if there's like an XP generator or something. There's this thing, but that's an enchanter. So I'm looking into powering options. Right now I could swap this cell out for the one upstairs, but I don't really want to do that. I'd like for this to be self-sufficient. So one of the things I thought about was a death generator because you can use... Um, where is it? Death generator. You can use this... I forget how to actually see... There it is. So you can use a death generator for bone and zombie flesh and that kind of stuff... Um, to power it. So I was thinking it would be a, a cool way to do it um, because basically I could take the drops from the mob or the mob crusher and do like, I don't know, some kind of servo whitelist and have it uh, pumping in bone and other stuff. So that's an idea that I'm gonna play around with and I'm gonna see if it'll see if it'll work out. Um, just for example, this is where all the piping is. And this is some more of the redstone stuff, so this is the guts down here. Uh, very close to lava down here, which is not all that comforting. I don't know why I have stone on me and not cobble. Probably because I threw all my cobble in that drawer. Uh, do I have any andesite? No. Alright, whatever. So yeah, that's what I'm kind of working on. So I'm going to work a little bit more on the power system and see if we can't get this set up. Okay, so I actually had to go mining for a minute because I was almost out of redstone completely. I also got some more diamond and stuff like that, but I heard this. It's raining. And I've been wanting to show you guys. I actually did some test footage. The Well, not test, but dummy footage. Um, it says it's supposed to be sunrise, but it's not very... Oh, there it is. Rain, for some reason, is one of my favorite times on this shader pack. Like, normally I'm not a big fan of rain. Um, it stops your bees from working, and in real life I've kind of gotten a little scarred from rain because uh, rain seems to make my dog crazy nervous, so I used to not really care, and it was like, yeah, it's kind of fine, whatever. Um, but after having my dog who freaks out every time it thunders or something, now I hear thunder and I'm like, oh gosh, great, it's kind of rain again. So, I'm not usually a big fan of rain. But, in this shader pack, I love it. I love the rain. It, it has this cool kind of misty fog type thing. Anyway. There we go. That's better. That's more what I was... That's more what I was thinking about. I don't know. I don't know why I like it so much. It's just kind of cool. I'm actually out here hunting for spider eyes at this point. Uh, because I need a spider eye to finish the death generator, and I don't have one. Surprisingly, apparently I had one and I used it for something. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of hunting for spiders. For speeders. So yeah, hopefully I can find one soon. Okay, so I think everything is set up at this point. Um, it's basically just ready to start. Uh, we gotta power this up and then we gotta test it out. So I'm gonna start with bone. Throw that in there. Spectre of Death will arrive. Wait, what? Nobody, nobody warned me about this. What is? What is that? I didn't know that. I didn't know that would happen. 
I'm actually really, I did a backup before um, I started this part because I really wasn't sure. I'm glad I did because if this thing kills me, I'm going to be mad. I didn't know that was a thing. Doom. Oh, well, that's lovely. I'm prob I am probably shouldn't use this then. But I don't know if this will work or not because I have this set up to try and whitelist this, but I don't know if I'm going to end up pulling the items out or not. Uh, we're making power, but why isn't it going into the... I'm really concerned about this Doom thing. I'm trying to figure some stuff out before it arrives, because it'll probably just kill me. This isn't getting any power, though. Oh! I met Doom. Okay. Okay, so that, um, that went well. <laughs> uh, wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but it actually, it actually was a good thing. It actually was a good thing because, um, I learned a few things. Was I missing anything else? I think that's all I needed. Oh crap, I shouldn't have used all my bones. Now I can't set the bones to, tell me I have more bones. Uh, can I use bone meal to make bones? Is that a thing? Uh, how do I make bones? Oh, I can make bones out of a rib. That's perfect. Um, I know I have a rib somewhere. There, there. I didn't know I could make five bones out of that, though. Boom. All right, nice. So, I think I have everything I need now. Um, so I'm changing up my design a little bit. So I went to, I went to the Googles, the interwebs, and, um, apparently it, uh, the doom effect was something that was added. I need to put pressure plates or something in here. Uh, doom was something that was added at a different, or at a, at a, some other patch point where now they have that effect on things. Um... All right, cool. This is powered now. I didn't have the cable line connected. I had disconnected it on accident, and that's why that would not work. <sighs> I need to leave that open. I haven't put the drop down there. Um, and I didn't grab covers. Hold on. Okay, now I think I have everything, because I have the laboratory cover block so that we can cover up this ugly cable, and I need to make this hole again. Though that is kind of the last thing that I need to do. So first let me show you what I did here. So apparently the way this works is when the death generator is generating power, um, then it gives off that aura. And according to the FTB wiki, which I'm trusting, I'm believing, so don't steer me wrong. Um, prevent oversending. Always oversend. Prevent oversending whitelist. Um... So basically, the way this works is when it's generating, it gives off that aura in a 3x3 three three area if the wiki's correct. And within that 3x3 three three area, you get um, Doom, which basically is a countdown and you insta-die. So, but like I said, um, it actually worked out a little better because now I learned about filters. Filters are the opposite of servos that rather than pulling out items, they will put stuff in, but they have to filter it. So I'm whitelisting Rotten Flesh and Bone. And I think, I don't know what this means exactly, but I think prevent oversending means if this is full, it can't go in there. So if it's full, um, it won't get any more items. And then the rest of them should, in theory, go to the um, chest. And at some point, I might do something to where I can have a manual shoot or something so I can... You know, if it runs out of power, I can send more, but I don't see that happening between the power cell... Um, and the way that the, the spawning should work, that the mob grinder should be kind of in a loop. It should be caught in a power loop, in theory. The only question is whether or not the death generator will generate enough power is the only thing. So we'll have to see. But in the meantime, we can cover this up, and I can cover this up. And actually, can I put... I can't with you there. Get out of here can put cover there, a cover there. Awesome. So we got a little bit. I don't know what died. It might be one of those bats. Awesome. All right. Uh, so we should be good to go now. 
So the next step is to really quickly... Oh, it won't matter because I have the uh, lights on. Cool. Alright, so this is fully powered. It requires a thousand RF per tick. Now, let's do some quick math real, real quick, as the name implies. Um... Of so it's sixteen thousand RF for one bone and eight for one rotten flesh. So as long as one zombie or one skeleton spawns, it should be enough to keep this running. So that's perfect. Um, I don't know what'll happen if we get an overflow of essence, but we'll see. So if I did this right, boom. All right, so we have cursed earth now. Now out of curiosity, I'm just I just want to see does go under there. All right, cool. I can never get these to place right. Uh, is it here? There we go. So it does actually make cursed earth under these, so it's possible that they'll spawn, I guess, and then land on the conveyor and move them in. Ooh, this is so creepy. Um, and then we'll block that back up. All right. Now, theoretically, if we did all this correctly, when I flip this lever, we should get spawns. I'm going to watch it for a minute and see what happens. Oh, wow. No, I guess we don't even need to watch it for a minute. Holy crap, that spawns fast. All right, so are, why aren't we getting anything? Let's turn that back on. We got an issue here. I didn't mean to... Where's, where's my walkway? I had a walkway in here. Where did it go? There it is. Alright, so... Oh, crap! I can't go in there. Hmm. I almost did this exact same darn thing. Um... Alright, so I'm thinking it's a servo problem. I also have to be careful of where I am. Uh, because that death generator is a 3x3. I think I put it far enough in the ground that it shouldn't bother me. Right, hold up. There's no items there. It's possible that they just didn't drop any items. It only killed like two things. Let's let's um let's try it again. Let's let it run a little bit and see what happens. Because it's possible either it took it too long and it arrived now. Um or it's also possible Oh there they are. Wow, okay. So it just took it a minute. Alright, cool. Where did I get a carrot from? Now, the cool part about... Wow, that works so fast. The cool part about how this works... Wow, this is actually building up power, too. This is awesome. I think we have a fairly... Sus oh, I think we have a fairly sustainable system here. This is cool. Um, the other neat thing about this Cursed Earth system... Oh, there's ender is is that is that there's no real limitation on what can spawn um only what can spawn i wonder why we're not getting stuff though our essence is filling up pretty good oh so it is it is trickling through the items are trickling through it's possible that they're not oh there's a bone it's possible that they're not um dropping as much Either that or it's just taking a real long time. Or it's having to, like, cycle one thing through, get it all the way up here. Oh, wow. I did not think this through. This is an awesome idea. I love it. We're actually gaining power. We're gaining essence. We're gaining stuff. This is cool. Um, this is actually working really, really, really well. All right. I just want to see one thing. And I love that. I love that right there. That is so cool. This worked out so much better than I expected. But yeah, the the real the real neat part to using the cursed earth system. Okay, there aren't any items there, so it's either just not getting a lot or it's just taking it a little bit of time, but they're not like getting stuck in there or anything like that. That's cool. There we go. Archaic brick. Oh, it even spawns mods or modded ones. Ooh, this is going to be cool. This is going to be cool. So, again, the, the benefit to this over the duplicator is that the duplicator can only do one item. I'm going to turn this back off and keep this sucker going. Uh, they can only do one item. 
but the Cursed Earth method lets you do basically any mob, uh, any mob that will spawn on uh, regular, regular, regular old Earth stuff. And we're actually gaining power too, so we're supplying that with enough juice. Um, but we're also getting excess. What I'm wondering about this, and I think it'll just be a time will tell, is I'm wondering if for some reason. What I'm curious about is because there's a lamp right above the grinder, it's working though, so I don't know how it would be work how this would be. Oh, it's set for always active. I'm wondering if the servo is turned off when this is Well, that wouldn't make any sense because the redstone signal is coming from it when hold on. I'm thinking it's a servo issue. Because when I turn the lights on then it seems to supply stuff. I'm wondering if it's a servo problem. Uh, let's see, am I safe breaking this? Yes, okay, so this is the item duct. Redstone set to disable. Um, so yeah, the redstone signal is on right now, so it must just be taking time. It must just be taking a longer time than I expect it to. Because if it were a redstone issue, like if it was getting a signal which was disabling it, then it should be disabled right now, not uh, when this is off. Now the redstone's off, so now it should be supplying it all. The so it must just be a time thing. I'm using the basic um, item ducts, so it must just be a time thing. But anyways, yeah, we have a working self-sustaining mob farm with giving us essence items and power which is awesome so this is gonna i think be the i might end up moving where the power cell is but i think this is gonna be the power supply to our base basically this energy cell is now gonna power other stuff um and then we can do essence somewhere else you know whatever you can do whatever but this is awesome I'm happy about it. Um, quick little thing for those of you that just watched the FTB thing. Um, my episode schedule is still pretty erratic, so I don't know when I'm going to be making what. I'm kind of just making what I feel like when I feel like it right now, uh, when I have the time. So um, I will let you guys know when that changes, but for now I'm kind of in limbo at the moment. I still haven't gotten clarification on the job situation stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't really know... Uh, I'm, there's basically still a lot going on behind the scenes that um, I'm not sure about how it's going to affect the schedule at the moment or how I could do a, a, a sustainable uh, release schedule. So for now, it'll probably be mostly Stationers and Feed the Beast because those are the two games I'm kind of playing that I, I do LPs on, but I'm kind of just playing them off camera as well sometimes. Mostly Feed the Beast. Uh, Stationers I dabbled in a little bit because they didn't update, but... Um, so yeah, that's what I'm expecting. So I don't have a set release schedule right now, and I will let you guys know when that changes. But for now, it'll kind of just be what I'm playing, when I'm playing it, and when I have time to record it. So I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.